Hi everyone, it's Steve Krause and welcome to Writing 444 slash 544, Writing for the Web. Um, I'm coming to you just the day before classes begin. I'm, I am find myself woefully behind in planning for the course because I was spending all of December trying to finish writing the book. And I've got, made pretty good progress on it, but as a result of it, I'm kind of behind where I prefer to be in terms of planning for the class. But what I want to do in this video is run through some of the key things about the syllabus and reassure you some things about some of the assignments and the schedule and, um, you know, hopefully generate some questions, which you can post down below here uh, as you introduce yourself and as you, as you start meeting each other. Okay. Now, I'm looking at it, actually a different screen over here at the uh, syllabus. So the first thing you might want to do is look at the course syllabus as you watch this movie as you go along. Um, basic stuff is all there at the top. Um, my last name is actually pronounced Krause, although a lot of people pronounce it Krause. It's fine. Uh, you can call me Steve, you can call me Professor Krause, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, it's how to get a hold of me. The class writing for the web is something I've been teaching for a long time and it's changed a lot over the years as you can imagine. But in the nutshell, uh, what we're trying to do here is, is, is explore what it means to write about things that exist on the web and how to make documents that exist, how to make documents that exist on the web. So as a result of that, there's basically three major projects for the class. We're going to do some basic learning of HTML and CSS. We're going to be um, doing some basic web development and that will involve some usability testing of some existing EMU websites and it will involve making some websites uh, based on text that you have already. And we'll be doing a social media experiment uh, this semester where we're going to try to put together something that's essentially the equivalent of a textbook. Um, that's an experiment this summer, um, this, this, this uh, fall, winter, this semester's right, the, the, an experiment this winter I haven't tried before, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, you'll um, keep all of your work, in terms of where you'll publish it, will be on a, a web portfolio, with that, which will be you'll make available with WordPress. And if you're a graduate student, and there's quite a few graduate students in this class, you will also engage in another assignment, which is that you will interview somebody um, about an issue having to do with publishing and writing professionally for the web, for social media, for something like that, okay? There's two books that you need to get for the class. The first is this one, Steve Krug, Rocket Surgery Made Easy. Um, it's funny, it's, it's accessible, and it's a good introduction, merely an introduction, but a good introduction to the basic concept of usability testing. The second book, this one called Letting Go of Words. Um, this is by Jenny Reddish. Um, get the second edition. This is a great book um, in terms of some of the nitty gritties of writing of textual issues having to do with the web. Um, we'll also be doing a lot of readings that are available only online or there are PDFs and things like that at the course site. Now you can all read so I'm not going to go through all the details about this but, I'll, but a couple of highlights. The first one is is that the class is called Writing for the Web and it is an online class. So on the one hand, there's no particular technical requirements for the course, no experience necessary. But on the other hand, if you have previous experience making websites, um, this class would be a lot easier than if you don't. And if you have particular fears or phobias about doing that kind of stuff, you're going to have to find ways in your life to get beyond that and to push beyond that. And I'm here to help. Um, I really am. But what I'm saying is, is that uh, you, I just want you to be aware of what you're getting into. I mean, we are going to be doing some basic coding. We are going to be doing some computer stuff that is beyond just opening up a Microsoft Word file or attaching something to an email. Um, so if that represents a sort of um, point of growth for you, that's fantastic. And I hope that you look forward to it and you embrace that uh, as we go into the semester. The other thing that I'll mention, too, is that it's an online class which doesn't mean that it's a self-study class. It means that it's a class where we're not meeting face-to-face, -face, but we're still meeting at basically the same time, um, just in the online discussion forum. So the way that that, um, so that, that's important to work out for a couple of different reasons. First off, um, there will be discussions due on Mondays and on Wednesdays. 
uh, during the week. And I'll talk about that a second when I get to look, when we talk about the calendar for the class a little bit, okay? Um, anytime on Monday, you can begin a discussion. Anytime on Wednesday, you can begin the discussion. But there are consequences if you are late to that discussion in terms of the grade, and that's what the participation grade is about. And also, um, there is this, this notion of that you can be so absent from the class that it's just like not showing up at all, and that can result in failure of the class. Um, the next thing I want to point out about online classes is that the great thing about it is that you can do them wherever you want. And if you think about it, as long as you're beginning at any time on Monday or Wednesday, that's a, that's a 24 hour window. And most people should be able, that shouldn't represent a problem. Some people, maybe you get online at six o'clock in the morning, maybe you get online at midnight. I don't, whatever works for you, but as long as it's within the 24 hour windows on Mondays and Wednesdays, we get to start the conversation. Um, but you do have to actually engage in the class. And what I mean by that is, is that only you can keep track of both your access to uh, this material, the, 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 to the class site, and also your diligence in doing it, okay? So what I mean is, is that if you are in a situation where um, you're gonna go on a two week trip in the middle of the semester and you're not gonna have internet access, this is probably not gonna work out because that's like missing two weeks of the semester and you would probably fail if it was a normal class. Um, if you're living in a situation and your roommate or significant other or parent or whoever um, has the one computer that you have access to and then takes it away, that's not going to be a, a good excuse. You've got to be able to make sure that you can get access to um, the computer stuff. Um, th as far as the online participation goes, I lay this out in terms of the process of the grade, but in, in really what it comes down to for participating and getting a good grade is doing it on time. So as long as you write a good, as long as you're participating in the discussion diligently from the beginning of the time to discussion times until the end of it, you'll do very well in participation. And I lay that out in the syllabus. Um, sometimes people will ask me, sometimes people will ask me, well, how much time do you think would be a fair time to spend in the online class? And the answer I always give sometimes surprises people, but to me, it sort of makes a certain amount of sense. It, you should probably plan on spending at least three hours a week, give or take, interacting with the class website. And a lot of people may think, wow, that seems like a lot. In addition to reading and all the other sort of exercises for the class, a lot of times people say, oh my goodness, that seems like a lot of, more than I was anticipating. But if you think about it for a second, if we were meeting face to face, we would meet for about three hours a week. So that's really all I'm talking about here is that process. I check into the website for the class on Mondays and Wednesdays, certainly early. I'll follow up on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Hopefully you'll get kind of a rhythm for how that participation is going to work out, okay? Now, besides just the discussion uh, part of the class, there's three major projects that are worth 750 points that everybody's going to do. Um, the Code Academy exercises, the usability testing, the hypertext project, and the social media collaborative experience. Now, I have to tell you two things right off the bat here about two of these assignments. Code Academy, um, literally like a week ago, <laughs> figures, I changed the ways that it works. So we are actually going to be discovering the new Code Academy exercises more or less together this semester. And it'll work out, but there may be some bumps along the way and some changes and things like that. The other assignment, the Social Media Collaborative Online Reader Textbook Experiment, is just that. It's an experiment. And it just seemed to me that there's so much material out there right now on Facebook and Twitter, about Facebook and Twitter, um, in the popular culture. I'm thinking particularly of the election, but all kinds of aspects of the popular culture over the last year or so, that... I think that it might be a really worthwhile exercise, an interesting exercise for us to put together essentially an anthology. And um, you'll see when you look at the assignment itself, there's different tasks associated with that, with that anthology. But um, I haven't done this assignment before, so we'll, we'll see how that kind of turns out, okay? If you're a graduate student in the class, and there are several of you, you will also be doing another project, which is that you will electronically, probably, interview someone who has something to do with writing for the web professionally. This might be somebody who is a web page designer. This might be somebody who is a, um, a 
content management specialist. This might be somebody who is a search engine optimization specialist. This might be somebody who does social media for somebody. Somebody who does public relations for somebody with the web. It could be any number of different things. We'll talk about the details of this as we go along, but your job as a graduate student is to find this person, to run by me who this person might be, and then the, the second half of the semester, each of you will have an opportunity to essentially present electronically how that interview went with everybody else uh, in the class. So it's, it's an opportunity for you to bring in that expertise from outside the class to reflect on some of the discussions we've had. Um, the portfolio for the class is a, there's a, um, a website, well, a WordPress site that all of you will be creating that you'll be using to host the materials that you write for the class. In other words, you're not going to be handing in, even on, on Canvas, any essays for me to comment on or to uh, read or whatever. I'm going to read them, but I'm going to read them on your website. And um, there's some, and, we'll, and I'll walk you through the whole process about this, but what I'll mention now is that that portfolio, how you present it, how you put it together, is actually another different part of the grade, okay? And the other thing is, too, is that it will be public. So you'll want to keep that in mind in terms of, uh, the potential audiences that you might reach with your material, okay? Okay, so that's the basics of the syllabus. Let me take a second to walk you through very quickly how the website overall works. And I, and I point this out because, or how the Canvas site works at least. And I point this out because Canvas is kind of an interesting beast in the sense that it's really, really flexible. And that means that sometimes I put things as an instructor in places that you as a student might not think. So let me let me explain to you how I've laid out the, this class site. Okay, so watch this. Okay, so this is what the homepage probably looks like to you uh, when you first log in. Uh, and I was just talking about the syllabus, which is here. And if you've gotten to this video, then you've already figured out to hit the class introductions part. But the thing that's really important is, is this main page is where you're going to find uh, the calendar and when we're doing different things. Sometimes students will get kind of confused by this kind of section over here. And this is this kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. Or another place where people sometimes get confused is if you go to the syllabus, and this is not a feature I like, there's all this stuff down here, and I don't think that that's very useful to look at either. Um, so, And sometimes people just click on, say, the discussions and try to follow it there, the assignments and try to follow it there. This is what I mean. that um, uh, Canvas allows you a lot of different ways into looking at the class that may not be that useful. So what I would suggest is that you go just to this page right here and then just follow along, right? Some of the links take you to like what this page did. It took you to the page you're looking at. Some of the links take you to um, something completely different. Like this is a Google survey that you should check out when, when uh, you get a chance. Um, <clears throat> the, when it comes to the class discussions that are graded, those usually say read and discuss. This current one says is just class introductions, um, and that's graded activity. But some of these other act, some of these other links, like where I'm describing here, the Code Academy exercises, that's just a space where you could ask questions if you wanted to. Um, but I'm not going to grade you for participation on those. Um, these spaces, though, for example, here, read and discuss about the world's first website. This I will be grading on, okay? Now, like I said, this is a class that I have not quite prepared to the, to the extent that I would like, but I know what we're going to do this week, and I know what we're going to do next week, and honestly, I have a pretty good idea what we're going to do after that, too. Um, there's some other important dates to continue, one, can, uh, you know, that are coming up. One thing that we'll talk about is during finals week, the last day of the class is probably going to be April 20th. I'll figure out some other stuff. That's when the last day to, to turn stuff in goes. Um, but again, this use this main page as your main way of navigating the class site. I think that's it for now. This has been plenty long. Sorry, it's too long as it is. And like I said, there's going to be a lot more details coming with the class. But in the meantime, um, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, introduce yourself below and ask questions about what's what you're concerned about or what you want to know about 
um, uh, that I don't explain very clearly in this video or the syllabus or something like that, and um, and, and and where we're going to go from here. All right, cool. I'll see you online.